Hello, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have an incredible uh, session for you with some very exciting data presented by even more exciting speakers. So I'm going to keep this very short, but since we look at the genome a little different than our friends in sequencing, I'm going to go through how it all works real quick. So BioNano is a genome imaging technology. We take pictures of the genome, and it is to find structural variation. These arrangements in the genome that can um, have a laser gain of material, but can also be balanced and are typically very hard to pick up. Now in a high-tech, uh, research-focused crowd, like at this conference, you may not know this, but the standard of care in cancer and genetic disease to look at structural variants in a clinical setting is with cytogenetics where a microscope of some sort is used to look at patterns on intact DNA molecules uh, to visualize structural variation. And when NGS came along, there was this promise that all of this, this better not keep going like that, that, um, that all of this would be replaced by NGS. But the problem with NGS was that uh, the sequencers didn't come with a microscope, they came with this. And this may be silly, uh, but I would challenge you to tell me how many pieces of strawberry there are in this blender after I turn this thing on. But that's exactly what you do with NGS. You take a perfectly beautiful intact genome and you shred it. And then you try to analyze and piece back together what it looked like. So we do that differently. Another problem with NGS is really this, and that is that the genome is highly repetitive, with just about a third consisting of unique sequences and two thirds consisting of repeats. Now, if you're using 100 base pair reads to make sense of two thirds of the genome that is repetitive, those 100 base pairs are shorter than all but one of these elements of repeats. So uh, arrays of these repeats, tandem arrays, uh, are just impossible to analyze correctly with NGS. And you can say, I don't care about repeats, but if you're blind to these repeats, then you're often also blind to the structural variants that are flanked by them. And many SVs are caused by the recombining of these repeats, um, creating the structural variants in the first place. So that's why cytogenetics is still the standard of care. Now, the way we do that at BioNano is um, we add to this system our nanochannel array, hundreds of thousands of parallel nanochannels that can linearize the DNA and image them just like that. And our microscope is called Sapphire, and it automates this process for you. So BioNano has an entire workflow. We have the Sapphire instruments. We have kits for DNA extraction and labeling. We have our arrays, our, our, uh, our chips that can linearize uh, the DNA molecules, and we have our software for analysis. So to start imaging megabase-sized DNA, you have to have megabase-sized DNA, and that's not obvious because every standard DNA isolation method, whether it uses spin columns, magnetic beads, or simply precipitates the DNA, breaks these molecules in fragments that are typically shorter than 50 KB. So you can't get megabase data out of that. So we developed our own protocols, and our latest is the BioNanoPrep SP DNA isolation protocol, where we simply lyse these cells in solution and then grab onto the DNA with a disk that can hold onto um, micrograms of DNA. Then you simply wash and elute in a clean tube, and you have extremely long, extremely clean DNA. This is an automatable process. We're working on that right now. But right now, it takes about four hours. We can work with less than 650 microliters of fresh blood or frozen blood. We can work with fresh or frozen bone marrow aspirates as well. You can work with cultured cells. We need about a million and a half and about 10 milligrams of cancer biopsies. We can do FFPE because that DNA is just too fragmented. And the results that you get are really long. Here's a result of a good but not exceptional run where you see that the N50, so somewhat of the weighted average of our molecule length is 434 KB. Uh, it's fair to say that we see over 350 KB on average, and that tails off all the way into the uh, megabases with 2.6 megabase per molecules detected routinely. I circled here where uh, long read sequencing plays, and the routine uh, read length that you get there doesn't even really fit on that graph on the left. Once we have these molecules, we label them with a single enzymatic reaction that attaches a, attaches a fluorophore directly to the DNA at the location of a six base pair sequence motif. So just a single sequence motif all throughout the genome labeled in an enzymatic reaction. There's no probes. So now we end up with something like this, long DNA molecules that have a fluorescent label attached to them. And then our instrument will use electrophoresis to move these molecules into nanochannels and linearize them. And when they're linearized, they're uniformly stretched, and we get all the information that we need just by taking a picture. 
It looks like this. You can easily see how each of these molecules sits in these nanochannels. Uh, the blue signal is the backbone that is stained with an intercalating dye. And in green, you see that specific label site uh, that is fluorescently labeled. When the DNA moves through the chips, it looks like this. Uh, this is really our, our, our best video. Uh, you see the Gaussian coils of DNA moving through these pillars. It gently unwinds and then moves into the nanochannels where the electrophoresis is passed and the molecules are imaged. And we do this over and over and over again. And that allows us to collect three times 1.3 terabase pairs uh, of a human genome per run. So each of the flow cells of the three flow cells chips, two chips fit in an instrument, uh, collect 1.3 terabase pairs. Our spec says 48 hours. In reality, we see that more at 24, 28 hours or so for three genomes. Um, we have a first generation of Sapphire as well that just takes uh, two flow cells. And this week we released an update to our instrument control set software that allows it to also collect the 1.3 terabase pairs. It takes quite a bit longer, but functionally now you can get that extremely deep coverage uh, on our older instrument as well. It doesn't happen very often that lab instruments become better and faster as they age, uh, but that's, uh, that's how we do this. Once the images are collected, we extract digital information of the molecules out of these images, and we perform a complete de novo uh, assembly of the entire genome. We do this because mapping reads or molecules back to the reference doesn't work very well if that reference doesn't correspond to your sample, as is the case often in a highly rearranged genome. So we built a genome that is there, whatever it looks like, and then we can compare it to a reference. Like here, if the reference is in green, you can see a deletion here um, based on that alignment. We can do this for every major type of structural variance. In a deletion, we measure that the spacing between labels decreases. If that dec decrease is 500 base pairs or more, we call that automatically genome-wide. An insertion is similar. The spacing between two labels increases. We call that genome-wide at 500 base pairs. We're going to hear a lot about repeats today. We can size those. We can detect duplications, direct or indirect, uh, by finding a label pattern that aligns twice. A translocation looks like this. A genome map in blue aligns for half with one chromosome and for half with another chromosome, or another part of the same chromosome. We call them starting at 50 KB. And an inversion starting at 30 KB is detected when the label pattern is simply flipped around. So I'll walk you through one example of how we look at the genome. Here's a case from MD Anderson where four children uh, in the same family had an extremely rare tumor, a one in a million type of occurrence. And we're looking here at a small part of the genome where we image some molecules. You can already see probably that there's patterns in these molecules. So we built a consensus genome map that represents the average spacing of these molecules, of these labels. And then uh, when we compare that to HG19, you see that the left aligns nicely, but on the right something's going on. We build another allele as well, of course, in a diploid genome. And uh, what you're really seeing here is that there's a 38 KB fragment that's in six tandem duplications in the patients and not in the controls. And we know this so certainly because we have single molecules that span the entire 230 KB of that repeat. That is the power of our technology. We visualize structural variants on single molecules. We don't chop it up in tiny little pieces and then try to piece it back together from uh, all these bits of data. We see structural variants on single molecules. And because of that, we call these structural variants very well. A paper in Nature Communications from earlier this year showed that in 154 human genomes uh, that were part of the Thousand Genomes Project, we called eight and a half times more insertions than with Illumina. You just don't see insertions with short reads, and we do, and we tell you exactly where they are. And in a comparison with long read sequencing, in this case, SpecBio as well, um, you see um, in, in a paper from the Human Genome SV Consortium that the blue section here, uh, deletions on the left, insertions on the right, a mega base here in the middle, um, you see that these large structural variants, both insertions and deletions, are really almost exclusively picked up by BioNano, specifically these insertions again. So if you don't use BioNano, you're missing out on all of these structural variants. The last thing I want to tell you is about some updates to our algorithms that we released this year. Um, with this 400x coverage that a single flow cell from Sapphire now gets, uh, you can call large copy number variants down to 10% allele fraction, which means that if you see a large duplication or deletion in just, say, 20% of the cells heterozygously, we still pick that up. 
And for every type of structural variant, with that 400x raw coverage, uh, we can detect every type of structural variant, translocations, inversions, deletions, insertions, and duplications, now down to 5% variant allele fraction. My most subtle slide, no one else can do this, no one comes even close. And keep in mind, you get this type of sensitivity, um, 400x coverage, just for about $500 per genome. That extra uh, depth of coverage that you get doesn't cost you any more. That's what I had as an introduction. Um, I'll leave it to our um, amazing speakers to continue from here. But I just want to point out that there's this uh, survey card. And if you hand that in, we'll give you a charge for your phone. And uh, we have a booth, of course. Uh, it's shiny and new. And you should come see it at uh, number 527. And with that, I want to thank you.